It's a big lipped alligator moment. A big lipped alligator moment. What's a big lipped alligator moment? A big lipped alligator moment. Well, I mean, that's not an alligator. It's a. Uh, that's not an alligator. You stupid sack of shit. Perhaps you don't remember the big lipped alligator scene from All Dogs Go to Heaven. This is named after the random musical number sung by a big lipped alligator towards the end of the film. A scene that comes right the fuck out of nowhere, has little to no bearing whatsoever on the plot, is way over the top in terms of ridiculousness, even within the context of the movie. And after it happens, no one ever speaks of it again. Oh, like the dancing fire gang from Labyrinth, the pink elephants from Dumbo, the creepy ass tunnel scene from Willy Wonka. That's right. And now this festering pile of pointlessness. Yes, Critic, you're learning a lot today. I am. I really am. Well, after that bit of nothing, our two main characters finally introduce themselves to one another. I'm Zach. I'm Krista. Pleased to fuck you. I mean, meet you. Krista shows Zack around the forest while those pesky, stupid humans foolishly unleash the monster Hexus, played by Tim Curry, from his wooden prison. He then works his way into their radio, where he tells the workers to head out and destroy Fern Gully. You're going to Fern Gully, and I want you there by morning. Didn't our boss used to be a woman? Wendy turned into a British guy. We then hear Hexus mm, sing about how he loves pollution and how he considers their relationship toxic love. Slime beneath me, mm, slime up above. Mm, you love my oh, toxic love. I'm just a cheap toxic heart from transsexual. Toxic mania. I'm just a cheap toxic cat from transsexual. Did that make any sense? No. Are you ever going to mention it again? Probably not. Big lip alligator moment. Big lip alligator moment. So Krista and Zach sit and talk more about how the rainforest is good and humans are the devil. But trees give life. They, they make the clouds, the rain, the air. Oh, we've got air. Yeah, if you don't mind getting all your minerals in one breath. <coughs> Too subtle! Don't you miss talking to the forest? Uh, what does it say? Well, listen. It's raining like magic. Oh, it's it sounds like a crappy like pop song. Yeah, that sounds cool. No, usually it's warm. No, no, cool means hot. You know, bodacious, bad, tubular, as in, you are one bodacious babe. And other 1992 catchphrases. To show his, um, sudden romantic interest in Krista, he carves her name into a tree, which is a fern golly no-no. No, no, you mustn't do that. Here. Can't you feel its pain? Its nervous system is screaming in agony! We need 10 cc's of penicillin, stat! So Krista introduces Zack to the rest of the Keebler elves as they all analyze her new friend. Somehow I thought they'd be... Uh, bigger. Well, uh, I had a little accident and he sort of shrank. I have some pills for that. Not that I need any. Things don't go well when one of the fairies is threatened because he used to be the most feminine male, which results in, what else, a cock contest. Why don't you come with me and the boys? We'll give you a taste of real Fern Gully wildlife. Unless, of course, you're not up to it. I'm up to anything you could dish out, bud. It's my stereo. Look, I found it, so I'll explain it, all right? Oh, it's a recording of music. <laughs> wow, Zach, way to inexpensive copyright your way out of this song. I'll teach him to move in on my girlfriend slash possible sister. Well, I don't know what the re is, but I know what music is, and that is not music. Isn't that right, Jasmine? Uh, I mean, Krista. Maybe we should consult the genie. Uh, I mean, Betty. After all, that is why I'm Sultan. I mean, King. I... Which animated movie am I in again? Come on, Zack. See you around, Zag. Allow me to mispronounce your name to express my disrespect for you. 
But Krista steals him away and takes him to what looks like under Three Mile Island, where they have a rather strange romantic moment. Someday you might be thinking life has passed you by. Your spirits might be sinking with hope and joy supply. Now you're pregnant. <laughs> Even though Zack and Krista were gone for just a few minutes, Krista arises to discover the fastest tearing down of trees in world history. Oh, if only we weren't so busy having fairy sex. Humans did it. Humans did it all. A wizard should know better! No! So the fairies gather together and decide the only thing to do is... Um... This. What are they doing? I don't know. Are they changing from mint flavor to raspberry fresh? I have no clue. Look out! It's the plot! Well, whatever they did, it all seems to center around Krista, as she's apparently the magical leader of the tribe now. This constant waving of my arms isn't working! <laughs> Well, all right, Gummy, we're going to war. Oh yeah, because every kid will understand the John Wayne reference. Gee, <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I'd swear they were saying that pollution and toxins were a bad thing. So Zack breaks into the machine and figures out that the only way to turn off this Leviathan is to turn off the Leviathan. Well, that was disappointingly simple. It doesn't even make sense. If he feeds off of pollution, what was he feeding on before the humans came along? The asses of cows? But don't worry, through the magic of... just magic, I guess, Hexus regenerates himself and comes back to life. That makes sense. They're numb from the brain down. But she gets out her magic bean that turns the Dark Lord into a Chia Pet for some reason, and thus all order is restored to Ferngully. Zack is transformed back to his normal size, where he'll go home forgetting about how to save the environment just like everyone else who watched this movie. Yay, I'm back to my normal size! Except... No! <laughs> this movie is awful! It made no sense, it made no money, and it made us want to chop down as many eucalyptus trees as possible! I think my biggest problem with this movie is that while they're trying to tell us to save the rainforest and not cut down trees, how many trees do you think they chopped down to make the paper for this goddamn animated movie? Or not to mention the greatest factual wrong of the movie, which is to infer that the major cause of deforestation is the goddamn logging industry. It's not. It's, it's cows clearing rainforests. We need rainforests, and you know, they clear them out for your goddamn hamburgers. See, even to environmental nutballs, this movie makes no sense. Say that again. Even to... <laughs> I'm a nostalgia critic. And I'm your nostalgia chick. We remember it so you don't have to.